Hi, I'm George with Music Production Alliance. In this video, I want to show you how to set up Qmixes using Studio One with the Focusrite control and the Claret 8 Pre-X audio interface. Now, you don't have to necessarily have to have the Claret 8 Pre-X as long as you're using the Focusrite control with any Claret range interface, then you should be okay. The principle should also apply to the Sapphire and Scarlet range. Let's take a look. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The easiest way I found that if you set up your outputs with a one-to-one -one relationship, this works out the best. So you don't have to worry about setting up any DAW playback channels here in your software DAW playback section. Let me show you how to do that. Here is how we can do the one-to-one -one relationship. If you go here, you can go to presets, go to direct routing. You have these various options. You can do it from here, from the preset section, just hit direct routing. And then what this does is on channel one and two, which is here, everything is grayed out. What this means is that the outputs of the Claret interface in the back are transmitting audio via outputs one and two. In this case, outputs one and two are going to my monitors and I have the playback set up to one and two. This is how uh, Focusrite set it up. Uh, don't worry about the hardware import or the custom mix, unless of course you have some microphones you want to monitor. The way I'm gonna show you right now, I'm assuming that you're gonna be doing everything through your DAW, especially if you're using Studio One with the new low latency option. Okay, uh, outputs three and four, again, I route it to three and four. So if you set up any cables um, on outputs three and four, you can, you're actually taking audio out of your interface and into maybe a second pair of speakers or even a headphone amp. The same for five and six. You see that everything's still grayed out, seven and eight. Okay, right now, because I'm doing this video, I'm having to monitor myself through line output seven, eight. And you see that I have playback one and two set up and my microphone set up here. But don't let that confuse you. Okay, so if you have a headphone amp, let's assume that you have your headphone amp going to line output seven, eight, or for that matter, it doesn't matter. You can pick either three, four, five, six. What this means is that wherever you connect the wires on back of your interface, you have to make sure that that's selected here. But because you have a one-to-one -one relationship on these outputs, you don't have to worry about it. You just connect your cables to the back of your interface outputs and into the inputs of your headphone amp. That way, you don't have to worry about this any longer. You're gonna do everything through the DAW. Now, let me show you how to set it up in Studio One. Let's assume that we're gonna send audio to your headphone apps via line outputs three and four. Okay, let's set that up in Studio One. In Studio One, I'm gonna go to the preferences, and then I'm going to go to song setup, audio IO setup, and as you can see, all of my inputs are set up already, but what we want is the actual outputs because this is where we're gonna route the audio. And we said that three and four are gonna carry the audio to our headphone apps. So let's set that up. I'm gonna add a stereo channel and just click on that stereo and I'm gonna rename it headphone amp. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna ensure you click on this box here and this is what uh, tells Studio One that this is your Qmix, that this is what you're gonna be using to monitor your headphones. Hit OK, and you're gonna see the faders or the sends to your Qmix come up here. Now, one thing that I wanna caution you about in Studio One, in Studio One, the sends either go to the tracks, but if you have your tracks routed to buses, then the Qmixes are only gonna appear in your buses. But if you want full control of your session, meaning that you actually want to do a mix uh, to your headphones, let's get rid of my buses. As you can see, none of the Q mixes are here, but let's get rid of this bus. And this is also routed to my drum bus. I'm just going to delete that. Now you can see that the Q mixes are starting to pop up there. I'm going to get rid of that one as well. And the overhead bus and the bass bus. Now you're going to start seeing them and also my guitar bus. And the way I'm able to quickly find them is because as you can see, they're white. And I'm gonna get rid of this one and this last one. Now you can see that all of the sends 
um, are starting to populate. And I have one more bus here. And I think um, these are just temps that I have set up, so don't worry about those. And I also have uh, another bus there. Now I have all of the Q mixes um, showing up on every track, as you can see here from the drums. So if I was to send some audio from the track here to my headphone amps, all I would have to do is, let's say I wanted to send a bit of kick, I'll just increase this. If I want to send a bit of snare, I'll increase that, snare bottom, and so forth and so on. And that's how you set up the Q mixes for tracking. Now, in this case, I call this a Q mix, but let's let's say that you have two people coming into the studio, and let's say one is a drummer and one is a let's say a piano player. Okay, so let's go back to our preferences and let's go back to our song setup and let's change this name to drum guy and let's add a new one for our uh, piano guy and let's rename it and let's call it piano guy don't forget to click your Q mix box and you're gonna select make sure that you select the outputs the boxes that correspond with the physical outputs of your interface so let's assume the drum guy is getting the audio to three and four and the piano guy is getting the audio through five and six hit OK and let's just hit apply so that it, it's already set up in all of our sessions now all I got to do is bring these up and now what you're going to see is our Q mixes are now labeled drum guy and piano guy and maybe you need to uh, set up a shorter name just to make sure it, it shows up let's fix that real quick let's just go to song setup and let's just call it drum drum drm mix drum Q and let's call this uh, piano Q whatever hit apply and this way you could see it a little bit better and now you can see here now of course your drum guy wants to hear you know kick snare so you do that and uh, you give them a little bit of, of what you want and your piano guy doesn't want to hear any drums so you just grab these and I don't think that you can actually do all of them at once let's see oh actually you can there you go so just get rid of the drums and uh, let's let's say he just wants a little bit let's just bring him up again just a touch for him and then the same thing you know your your piano guy just wants a little bit of bass doesn't want a lot but your drummer wants a lot of bass so that he can track along okay and the other thing that you have to double check is your outputs if you click on your outputs here and bring this out you should be able to see here your headphones uh, this is my headphone setup and if you have a hardware uh, and this gives you and I don't want to get into this but this is the low latency option here which gives you low latency for monitoring okay so here is your drum cue and here is your piano cue now one thing to pay attention to if you want to send them the click make sure that this is turned on like that and here is your actual click volume okay because what happens is most of most of the time we'll forget about the outputs here and this is the actual output volume going to our headphone amp as you see here is my drum cue and my piano cue and then here are my low latency options and now I have the click turned on and you should be able to now uh, monitor and remember on your focus right control we're doing this with a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship meaning every output is outputting audio as it comes through and so outputs one and two um, is putting out audio so if you insert cables to one and two three or four or five or six or seven or eight however many outputs your interface has then you're going to be sending audio out of those um, outputs into the inputs of your headphone amp 